Okay, uh, let's start without much ado. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, panel. Great to great to be sitting here and and talking about last mile. And before we talk about last mile, let me just give a context of why last mile is important. We are talking about digital. We are talking about retail going online, and there are two components to it, right? One is when you get the order, right? Reaching out to the customer, telling the story of the brand telling the story of the product, getting him to buy. And then there's a journey which happens after you have bought the product, right? Uh, which the marketplaces over years have perfected, right? You shop on an Amazon, the delivery experience is great. The shopping experience, I'll still go on Waramoda to shop there or Jack and Jones to shop there. I find it very tough to find Jack and Jones on Amazon because of the clutter on customer experience being so much. But the delivery experience on an Amazon is, you know, great, faster options, et cetera, et cetera. So the key challenges that we want to talk about today is as you go digital, as you go online, and as you leverage your offline ecosystem to be able to generate orders, what are the challenges which we face as in the last mile piece of it after add to cart, after the order has been placed? And how can we look at tackling those, your thoughts, something you're thinking, have seen, observed, and, 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 and et cetera in that domain, right? So we'll start uh, maybe with you, Daksh, right? Uh, on just talk about a great last mile or a delivery experience you have experienced. Either on marketplaces, any website, where it was a delightful experience for you. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, so I think um, the best experience is um, was somewhere where I was I knew about the product right from the warehouse when it left the warehouse till it reached its hub from where it was uh, sent for delivery to my place when it was on the way for which they again confirm whether that timing is suitable for you or not so after agreeing to that after which I got a delivery on the set time as mentioned on the website so for me, it was like, okay, you know, like this is the first time something like that has happened. Otherwise, there is some delay or the other because always a time range. Like the product will come from 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. So it'll come any time between that. So, you know, I have to inform my office or my, at my home that, you know, there'll be a parcel that will be coming. But when I know the time, I can immediately tell them. Correct. So that was a very good experience for me when I knew, when I had the information right from delivery till my home, that when it reached my home, that your product has been delivered. So for me, that knowledge, being a customer, was very satisfactory. Awesome. I, I think you have touched upon very two important, very elements. Yeah. Predictability. Just tell me when I'm going to get it. Don't tell me five to seven days. And then information. I know maybe you'll delay. Something might happen. World is not perfect. There will be defects. But at least keep me informed. Tell me it is a day late or a two day late, equivalent, et cetera. And there's two, I think just by doing, do, doing those two things right, you can add a lot of... Uh, value, right? Gordon, uh, we are set, you're looking at setting up the two D2C brands on beauty and beyond, getting orders. What are the challenges which go through your mind? Like what gives you sleepless nights on the delivery experience, if any? Yeah. And what are you worried about, concerned about, and what are your focus areas there? Uh, in terms of, uh, because since we are going to be a multi-brand, uh, you know, beauty retail format, uh, and we are quite young as well. So as we discussed, uh, we have started our journey with our retail offline brick and mortar format stores. Uh, we are also looking at in terms of having, you know, interactive screens where we call them as, you know, endless aisles. Uh, wherein any brick and mortar stores for this format, it is typically 1,500 or 2,000 square foot stores. We won't be able to accommodate the complete range and assortment uh, if you look at it. So as a consumer, when they steps in, uh, for offline stores, uh, definitely the kind of products what they would look at, there might be miss of one or two products what they are looking for because uh, the beauty category has become vast and it is you know a wider spread of it. Uh, at that time, uh, in terms of we are developing this as endless aisle to deliver the products from our you know through dark stores concept, uh, wherein it will be fulfilled uh, within no time because these categories like that in such a way where customer would want to touch and feel one. And second thing, uh, it is required within no time. Like 
obviously whether it is by if you, if a customer is looking at placing the order by morning today within 24 hours or by end of the day itself the challenges what we see here in terms of last mail delivery like the cost of it and because of the you know uh, in terms of the size of the product uh, i also in terms of you know uh, uh, delivery minute tat what what i said and also cost and also uh, since these are all very delicate products we always see in terms of you know uh, delivering without any kind of you know uh, damages to the consumer that's what we see and uh, uh, if you ask me like you know as we said uh, we are also coming up with lot of experiences uh, within the you know uh, offline stores uh, right now and going forward we are going to start our dot com like with our you know uh, own brands and as well as multi brands as well uh, so uh, definitely uh, there is a lot of scope like as you said as dal said like you know uh, if i am having the communication one thing what i would really say is without getting any call of delivery that is you know delightful experience what i would say yeah. and 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 now brands have evolved to using uh, new mediums like whatsapp to communicate you know call is very intrusive but yeah whatsapp telling the buyer it's out for delivery it's going to come today i think there are some ways yeah. and i think you touched upon a very interesting point uh, we were talking about post checkout experience after the demand is there you talked about an element which is relevant in offline of saying okay i have the demand but not the product in the store can i build an endless aisle experience and that should be one on one when you are looking at offline that child you are looking at setting a more 3 by 3 stores if a product is not available in one store and you have a walk in and you are offline heavy and you are experience heavy how do you enable the buyer to shop from some other store right, right? and that potentially also becomes a part of not traditionally last mile experience but if you expand it to delivery experience say okay there is a demand interest which is there how do i take the journey forward so thanks govardhan for that yeah uh how do you naman uh, so we've talked about the delivery experience marketplaces being better equivalent etc like you have built a very nice ecosystem of hyper local uh, or hyper local discovery of different shopping avenues and opportunities with a significant component coming from e-commerce as well how do you see that and how do you are you creating differentiation for the brand which are on your platform yeah so uh, yeah we like as a platform we drive discovery to hyper local stores that's what we do we work with large brands like uh, best seller which has jack and jones shopper stop and we drive discovery uh, and get people to the footfall to increase the sales for those stores off late uh, what we've done is we started to also add interesting elements for discovery which is like a catalog that enables further discovery so you would look for a let's say a white t-shirt around you and you'll get a catalog a list of very interesting items from multiple brands that you can discover and then you get the right price and finally you can click a button and get it delivered to you in 2 hours right one of the things that happens on e-commerce platforms it takes 2 days to 5 days even mintra's express is more 48 hours today right that's what we've been able to enable we've said that how can we increase the convenience for the customer which is discover better uh, get the best price and also get it delivered in a 2 hour time frame right so we are enabling kind of express delivery from the store to increase the sales uh, from the store now some of the challenges let me talk about some of the challenges right now interestingly when the order gets placed by the customer it goes to the store at times the products not available in the store the sku either wasn't available not updated or it is possible that someone's bought it in the meantime right so we'd hop the order we'd created solutions but at times it's just not available the other thing is the store in the staff is not attentive enough to even accept the order that's a fundamental problem that we sit on how do we train educate uh, the staff while food it's already done in categories as fashion or in pharmacy the stores are not yet alert or smart or trained enough to be able to service the order at times they just take too much time to accept the order and hence it gets cancelled right sometimes the rider would not just turn up rider turns up doesn't go and deliver the product and then even after that there's this refund flow the interesting thing about two hour delivery is that the rtos or returns are actually very low right. it's actually just very very low and that is one interesting thing that's getting solved where we've increased the convenience for the customer and we've made uh, it available in real time and on the brand side we've increased the sale and reduced the rto or returns that are coming through 
No, I, I think, thanks Naman for that. Very interesting on how quick commerce can be a big differentiator. We talked about, you know, there's the bar which has been set and we have to cover the bar. Here you are just changing the paradigm of saying you don't get two hour delivery for products and I might not be delivering the entire catalog or portfolio but there's a select portfolio which is available on me as a destination, say as Magic Pin, yeah. which is available at two hours, potentially can be extended, right? Going back to you, that three by three, there can be a filter of show me the products which are available in two hours because they happen to be in the store which is in Borivili and I am sitting in Kandivili versus some of the products might be in the warehouse at Bivandi which will come next day, etc. So how do you sort of iterate and think backwards? There are challenges when it is hyper-local, something Naman talked about on how do you pick, ensure it is picked up and delivered equal and etc. But yeah, as an ecosystem we need to continuously evolve towards solving that. Uh, moving on to you, Ranjan, I think uh, you have been through the drill, right? Like the most here, getting stores online, delivering, challenges of uh, both faster deliveries, national deliveries, RTOs, last mile experience. Your thoughts on your journey, like where were you say three, four years back? Where have you reached and where do you still see, Atul, this is something which we need to fix? Yeah, thanks Atul. So I think uh, four years back we weren't doing uh, only channel, we were not doing endless aisle, we were only selling offline and online, so they were only two channels who uh, existed and I wouldn't even say coexisted. So because they, uh, they worked in their independent silos of independent inventories, inventory uh, fulfillment logics and everything else. Uh, last four years, what has happened is, uh, which used to be one of the most abused term, omni channel, uh, that has become a reality. We all used to come and laugh and say, yeah, we're talking so much about Omnichannel. Uh, is anybody going to pay for Omnichannel? Is anybody going to invest into Omnichannel saying... Uh, and the biggest challenge was, will the store uh, let go that merchandise which was there, which they thought that they were the, in the best position to be able to sell to their customers? Because that was a big mind shift. Uh, which, which, which was needed from, from a store's perspective to be able to train the store and tell them, hey, uh, you need to let this inventory go. Uh, even if it's not there with you, uh, you will still be able to service a customer because you might find an inventory which is lying in some other store, in, some other, in a distribution center, in some other channel, which you still might be able to fulfill. That uh, mindset has changed to a, a great extent. That learning has come in from, the, from a store's perspective. Uh, the other big change that has happened uh, in, in the last few years is about uh, being able to make that same inventory available to multiple places. So when I say multiple places, uh, I could have had an inventory available for say uh, my online as a channel, within online, Mintra as, as a partner, uh, Amazon as a partner and, and so on and so forth. Uh, then, then that silos got uh, uh, broken down into into becoming, uh, making the inventory available for online, for offline and all of that. Further, that, that got reduced in terms of making one single view of the inventory uh, across your chain and that much more power uh, we were able to deliver in terms of being, making the inventory available across channels, across distribution centers uh, for, for anyone and, and then uh, the game changed in terms of saying uh, you can't hoard inventory. Inventory doesn't belong to anyone. It is the survival of the fittest. Whoever sells first will get the merchandise. Wherever the customer, customer is the king, the customer decides to buy from whichever channel, from whichever uh, medium he wants to do, and we will ensure that we deliver that inventory to him. Then the biggest problem started coming in again uh, once we were able to fix this was in terms of saying, we've, we've done, uh, uh, the, we've solved the inventory problem, we've solved the visibility problem. How do, I, how do I manage the experience, post-purchase experience? Uh, that became the key because uh, there were so many players who were, who were in that game and th there were so many uh, systems, so many, so many uh, uh, people, a store was involved, a distribution center was involved, a logistic partner was involved, there are so many tech partners who were involved. How to get that right? How to bring in a transparency and a visibility to the consumer to, to be able to tell him uh, through his preferred channel, most important thing is it's not about sending him an email or, or a message. You SMS, you don't decide that. Let the customer decide uh, which is the most convenient channel for him to get that information. Uh, we were just, uh, uh, I, I, I just heard uh, people talking about WhatsApp. 
yes i agree whatsapp is one of the most uh, accepted channel for communication but you also need to be aware uh, that there are a lot of repercussions of of not using it rightly uh, if of of not being able to handle those channels well you might uh, end up having a great risk of being being uh, labeled as a spam so you also need to be available from a service and and it's 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 so much more overwhelming to be able to say there are so many channels that's available and i am i, I can be able to deliver the experience uh, to a consumer over different channels and create so many more sales channels so many more uh, communication channels but that's the key in terms of being able to handle all of them and the big piece is about tying them all together to be able to give that experience faster delivery is is definitely an ask from a consumer uh, but i don't think every each and every customer is willing uh, or or asking for a very faster delivery some customers are used to getting that delivery in two days three days as well and they are okay with it so you need to filter out because there's a cost to doing a faster delivery there's a cost to building all of this logic and be able to manage that customer expectation in terms of saying how quickly does the customer needs then the other big piece is about the post purchase and the post delivery if the customer did not take the rto piece how do you solve for the rto that's another aspect that you need to solve for because india is a unique country and you have cod the consumer has such a strong power in his hand he could just go and place an order on one of the channels and 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 choose the option of cod or pay on delivery and he might uh, choose not to take the product how do you handle that how do you minimize that because there's a huge cost in terms of being able to deliver that so you have to optimize that because the unit economics measure has to come in you have to bring in an unit efficiency uh, until and unless you do that you will not make money in this business because there are so many touch points and so many partners involved so i think there are a lot of problems which have got solved we are still in the process of solving many more problems in terms of being able to personalize the experience for a consumer uh, for for uh, to the unit of a, one again so because again i'm saying unit, unit economics for one it was important now it is about uh, creating that experience of of to the unit of one is more important because every customer is different how do you create uh, a different experience for every customer on the channel in which in, in which he wants to uh, engage with you uh, at which he wants to discover you uh, and then in the way you want to communicate to him in terms of your whole post purchase uh, behavior and even post that so thanks thanks for that ranjan i think a few very uh, interesting points one was uh, in offline democratizing inventory we are saying there is no one who has a claim on that inventory whoever can sell it but that's easier said than done you need the systems to be able to do that right you need to bring in a common view of inventory where everyone can pull in have the right mindset a store owner not feeling oh my inventory is going in an online channel i think that's important i think the post checkout experience i'll keep reaffirming at the cost of sounding like a sales pitch there are brands I, and i and and that's where i think offline first brands need to pick up and sort of accelerate the journey on how are we communicating with our buyers after the order has been placed i was telling this to naman to a d2c brand when i pitch my post checkout experience solutions the conversation is about you are doing these six things i can do the seventh right and the question is on okay what is the delta between a 6 and the 7 and with an offline brand it's like you know what i placed an order and for four days you never sent me anything and just the delivery guy appeared on my door at my door right like don't you think a little bit of communication and an update would have helped so i think the post checkout has become really relevant for everyone from physical offline first who is moving digital it it's it's not a value add it's it's base necessity which we need to take care of we need to respect our customer i agree by the way ranjan not everyone needs one day two day delivery i need to give my merchant buyer the option maybe charge a premium but predictability Absolutely. tell me when it is going to come and please keep me engaged i i i say this to everyone i meet a brand a consumer when he is placing an order on your website interact with you for how long 30 minutes right we have multiple tools analytic pre marketing basis at 30 minutes right and then he is in a relationship with you for the next 3 days sort of it's an open relationship right like it's you can go on a date with the buyer 
in that sense you can send him a message communicate talk you know what you had ordered this beautiful dress can't wait to see you in this it has been shipped the client said how many of us are leveraging that on the post checkout piece whenever there's a defect i miss something i i i i screwed up on something and it does happen in operations am i apologizing in a very nice these are opportunities to create even more affinity so i think the post checkout experience piece which you talked about again very important and very relevant and yeah like give customers and give your buyers an option not everything is about one day two day some people might be fine with late but more options is what we are now used to courtesy amazon flipkart prime non prime one day two day three day i'll pay a premium no thanks thanks for that ranjan on to you amit fossil setting up you, we just talked about you going live with your dot com a few days back and you are really excited to splurge of orders which is coming in so talk more about the thinking behind doing that right moving from the offline and online your own d2c other than marketplaces and from a post checkout experience perspective what are the key challenges which you are facing you are solving and your outlook for this in future uh so i'll start with first about fossil group so fossil group uh, as a company is a digital first company right for us uh, and i've heard uh, many of our uh, colleagues in past this past sessions that uh, they're saying that we have reached 10% of e-commerce share we have reached 7% of e-commerce share or 20% of e-commerce share right i proudly say that fossil as a company has 50% e-commerce share online which is very good right and considering the digital first approach that we take in fossil there are different things that we do post checkout to ensure that the customer is engaged and the customer gets the information beforehand plus he is getting the information about the, not only about the delivery about the product as well because one is definitely as uh, my colleague said that uh, whatsapp communication is important right so that's one of that's one of the area where we are informing the customer about the delivery speed right but then there are other areas as well where we have to educate the customer of how to use the product right we are in a watch industry business we have to tell the customer how to use the smart watch how to configure the smart watch right how to change the strap of a watch right what is the definition of a lug width when he is again coming back on the site and buying a strap right so those communications are also important to keep the customer engaged make them a repeat customer for for my brand right so first is delivery delivering speed second is about the product third is customer experience from a standpoint where we are telling that he has bought a product from a brand which cares for him right which which tells the customer the brand tells the customer that boss you have bought an authenticated product because especially in watches industry there are a lot of counterfeit products right and see if even if the customer is buying from an amazon or a mintra or a flipkart or an ajio or tata click or even on the d2c side he may have some doubts that whether i have bought an original product or a counterfeit product right so for that as well we have built a system where there is a qr code which goes with the product the customer has to just scan that qr code he gets the information about warranty about support about how to use the product about uh, all other information all other catalogs and then the storytelling as well not only about the product that is that he bought we also pitch the product with some additional upselling and cross selling opportunities that boss you can use this these the silicon strap with this watch right this mesh strap with this watch right so that's that's the kind of communication that we share with the customer coming back to challenges i'll i'll break it down into multiple parts right so the challenge and especially talking from multiple angles when i say multiple angles i'll start from a brand perspective right from a brand perspective the first and foremost challenge is pricing because when you talk about and when you talk about delivering speed from a customer angle the brand has to absorb the cost of the delivering speed as well right so that's that's the first challenge that we face pricing second challenge that we face is delivery speed because it's a hyper local it's a quick commerce market now everybody wants delivery in 2 hours right people in china watching a live streaming show and they want the delivery in next 2 hours right people in korea korea follows a hard community right you, one live streamer tells about one emporia armani watch in there there's like lot of customers lot of visitors on that live streaming site who are going to buy that watch right now for us delivery speed is also important right from a customer standpoint third is from a partner standpoint because of the store network right it's also important that we consider the load sharing as well 
Because if I keep on allocating all my orders to one of the store in Indranagar, my other store is actually sitting free idle, right? And those guys, the pickers and packers in the, in this, in the store, right? They are overburdened, right? The capacity is actually, we are eating up their capacity, right? The other angles that comes into mind is that from a brand perspective again and from a customer perspective, it's a joint uh, 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 platform where we say that single view of inventory, right? Because inventory is very crucial. Flipkart gives an opportunity to combine all the stores and then show one uh, real-time inventory, right? Or maybe a real-time inventory with a buffer, right? But Amazon operates differently. They, add, they, they ask us, they, they allow all the sellers to act as an individual, all the stores as an individual seller, right? Similarly, on our D2C platform, we are showing one single view of inventory from all stores, right? So that, that is a challenge, actually. Because we have to combine the inventory, we have to consider the buffer as well, and then we have to populate the inventory on these sites just to avoid that out-of-stock situation. RTO will come once we start delivering the order, but the first situation is out-of-stock where I'm losing business from the brand side, right? Then probably after this, then communication is again the fifth uh, challenge that we face, right? So these are the kind of things that from a brand perspective I feel that uh, are actually important from a communication standpoint and the challenges that we face in the industry. Thanks, thanks, Amit. I think you brought on about, brought alive a very good, I think, global perspective because you're looking at APAC and you talked about what's happening in Korea where, like on live streaming, 10,000 orders coming at one go in two minutes and even if you want to deliver it in two hours and you have a promise, how do you do that? Uh, interesting challenge. I, I, I think as we see that evolve in India, if we have something similar coming in, we'll also have to look at how do we, how do we solve that part of the equation. And the other one, I think, uh, even I haven't, we haven't talked about it is, even my definition of post-checkout experience stops when the product is delivered, right? And I hear Amit say, oh, it didn't stop there. You know, you, the, the buyer got a product. You had a story to tell and the buyer bought it. You kept him engaged. But now it is the actual proof of what's happening to the product, right? Like just talk to the buyer, tell him more about the product, participate in their discovery of discovering the product, engage them. I think that's another element. And, I, and one of the key thing, one of the things I want to talk about is when we say last mile, right? It is not about only shipping. Yeah, it does sound like shipping. When you say last mile, it's not about moving a product from point A to point B, right? That we have been doing for ages. Like we have done it for the last 30 years. A good experience, a good delivery experience has a critical component of what was the customer engagement with the brand and the different facets of the product moving from point A to point B, right from showing the promise on the detail page. When am I going to get it? Give me a definitive promise. Five to 10 days is passing. Like I can on my website put five to 10 days even when I'm packing it two days later versus Ranjan getting it packed the next day, right? There's a difference. So show me predictable, show me a faster promise, keep me engaged. That's an opportunity for you to date me, keep me like involved with your brand and even after the delivery, keep it involved. Uh, I, I already see multiple timeout messages. So uh, thanks a lot for the panel. I think we started from very, when we have covered very diverse topics, hopefully it was useful for everyone. Thanks a lot to the panel and uh, thank you everyone for listening in. Thanks. Thank you.